just seen and done. Come on up. You can sit on the floor or sit on the stairs. Get our penny Sunday buckets up here. This is what we dream about every week at this time in the service. As we invite kids to come forward and half the congregation gets up and comes to the front. First of all, that was a lovely job of enacting this gospel. And it means so much to me, I may, I may to you as well, to see these stories acted out. I think it's wonderful the way Jesus teaches through stories. I really get it when Jesus teaches through stories. But I get it all the more when I see people act them out like you just did. It's so dramatic to think about someone walking along the road and being beset by robbers and beaten and robbed and left there. The story begins tragically, doesn't it? This is a scary, frightening thing. What is, does that frighten you, the idea of being robbed and left by the side of the road? It terrifies me. Oh my goodness. What an awful thing to happen to someone and to be lying there by himself with no one to care for him. And then, finally, somebody comes along. Who's the first one that comes? The priest. And of course, the priest comes immediately and being a priest, he jumps in and starts caring for this guy and treating him and... No, what does he do? He goes to the other side of the road to walk around. He just doesn't turn a blind eye. He literally crosses the street to avoid this situation, doesn't he? What's going on? A priest did this. Why would somebody do this? Yeah. Mm, the priest doesn't want to get his hands dirty in more ways than one, right? The priest doesn't necessarily want to get involved in this situation. Yeah. Is that what you were going to say too? Yeah. He doesn't want to, man, he's just not ready to take this on. Oh, no. Yes. You could become impure through this. And he's a priest. He's got purity issues to think about, right? Got to remain pure. But that seems like kind of a convenient escape, doesn't it? We still got somebody that's lying by the side of the road that's been injured and robbed. Clearly somebody in need of help, right? Well, at least the Levite comes along. And you know what Levites are, right? The priests come from the tribe of Levi. Levites are like religious people too, right? So certainly the Levite comes along and sees this man and calls 911 and comes to his aid right away, right? No. What does the Levite do? He does the same exact thing. He goes to the far side of the road and walks by. You think he might be afraid? This could be a scary thing, couldn't it? I mean, if you came walking along the road, could be daylight, could be nighttime. You walk along the road, you find somebody lying there injured. That's a pretty scary deal. I could understand him being afraid. But he doesn't help, does he? And it doesn't say that they go down the road and get help or they go down the road and tell somebody who can bring relief back. They just move on. Whew. Who might this be in our time? This is a story that Jesus is telling about his time. Who might some of these people be in our time? The victim could be anybody, right? Stuff, bad stuff can happen to different people, anybody, at different times. But suppose a Lutheran pastor walked by. What would we expect then? We would hope so. We would hope that a pastor would have some compassion on an injured, needful person, right? Unless they were too scared or too busy or didn't want to get their hands dirty or something. Or how about the, um, let's see, Levites are religious people too. How about the president of the church council? Suppose that person walked by. We would hope that they would help, right? You think so? I'm hoping too. I am hopeful as well. And knowing our church council vice, or president, I, I bet she would. But there is someone who does come along and help. And who is it? What does Jesus' story tell us this person is? A Samaritan. And we know what Samaritans are a little bit, right? These are not quite 
full citizens because they're kind of mixed breed in the views of the Jews. They're mixed race people that the, the modern Jews tend to look down on and ridicule and reject. And yet this Samaritan comes walking along and sees the guy laying by the side of the road injured and needing help and goes to the far side of the road and rushes away? No. What does he do? He helps the guy. He comes, it says he dresses his wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Tends to his wounds right there with oil and with wine. Used to clean him and bandage him. And then he leaves him laying there. No, the Samaritan, not only does he do this, he picks him up, puts him on his own donkey, and takes him to Evan's inn. Right? Takes him to the inn. And what does he do there? Drop him off? Takes him inside, gets him checked in, lets Evan run his credit card, and any expenses that the innkeeper goes to, he will cover. He says, do whatever you need to do to care for this man, and I will pay whatever expense is involved. That's extraordinary, isn't it? That's amazing. That's just not meeting somebody where they are. That's helping somebody take the next steps forward in life. This is like a gift of life that this Samaritan is doing. Now, who might that be in our day? Who might a Samaritan be? Somebody that's ridiculed and rejected and viewed as being different and other. Yeah. What about a homeless person? What about a homeless person? Who else? Who else might be, play the Samaritan role in our story? What about an immigrant? Someone of a different race? Someone who came who doesn't even have a place in this country yet. Suppose this was a 16-year-old Honduran boy that wasn't able to speak English and yet came along and cared for this one that nobody else would care for. That's the kind of impact Jesus wants this story to have. Because he says it's the, it's the powerless ones that have gifts to share and that are willing to do it that are not so caught up in their own world that they will reach beyond themselves into the lives of someone else and help them. You think you'd be willing to do that? I hope I would. Raise your hand if you think that you could be a Samaritan. Could you be a good Samaritan? I know you could. Because what have you been doing for the last four weeks? Making relief kits. In addition to learning a few songs and some other parts and stuff, right? But you have been doing a beautiful job of making relief kits. And our whole community has been involved in that. Right? They've been bringing in the materials that we need, right? By the boxes and armfuls. Water, wet wipes, socks, protein bars. And the little sheets that we have to put inside each one that list a whole bunch of other places where additional support is available to folks in need. And who are these for? Homeless people? Hungry people? Yes. Uh, yes, poor people. Exactly so. Yeah. They're for anybody in need, aren't they? Anybody who needs a little relief. And it's not just meeting their immediate needs for water, although that's a pretty good thing to have on a hot day, right? Some nutrition in their bellies, a fresh pair of socks for their feet, something that they can wipe their face and hands with. It's very hard for people who are on the road to keep themselves clean and to take care of their, themselves hygienically. It's not just that. It's giving somebody an opportunity to be nice to another person who really needs it. It's giving us an opportunity to let someone know that they are a human being, just like we are. That they matter, just like we do. That they have value. That they're important. That what happens to them matters. Right? This is what we do 
when we greet someone by the roadside and share a little bit of relief with them and hopefully a smile and just for that moment letting them know that someone cares for them. That's what we're about. And we hope to maintain this ministry and keep on doing it. So as people continue to bring in, we were making more relief kits between the worship services today. I think you guys made another 25 or 30 or so. And they'll be here and available for people to pick up and take with them as they go, right? That's blessed. That's a beautiful way to show people out in the world that the rest of the world kind of seems to be rejecting. That we love them. Just like God does. Should we say a little prayer? I'll say some words and you say them after if you'd like. Dear God, thank you for giving us a chance to let other people have a chance to know your love and care through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing our song of the day, shall we?